Hi, as you know from my last video, uh, I have created a, uh, a digital clock with Westminster chimes. Uh, speaker up here plays out uh, Westminster chime tones on the quarter hour, the half hour, three quarter hour, and so on. And, and at the hour, it also rings out the number of the hour. Uh, wow, well, that was a really neat project. Got a lot of nice feedback here on uh, YouTube and also on Instructables. Uh, I decided that the thing that was really missing from a clock that would play Westminster chimes was hands. And as you can see in the background here, I've built up, uh, so far I've built four different uh, test units for a digital clock with hands. Now the first question that uh, came to mind when I decided to do this is how am I going to drive the hands? Well, fortunately, I came across these little units. This is a, uh, a 5 volt stepper motor. It's a geared stepper motor with a controller board. And that controller board allows you to just feed 5 volts into it, uh, four data lines to an Arduino or other microcontroller, and that will control the number of steps it moves either clockwise or counterclockwise. The really nice part about this is I bought a box of five of these from Amazon for about $13 delivered. Uh, so you really can't beat the price. And that's the, uh, the real enabling device uh, that allowed me to build this. Now beyond that, there's a lot of other circuitry, there's a lot of other mechanical things that you have to do. The two hands that you see here are connected to two gears. And those two gears have concentric pieces of brass tubing. You can see this gear has a piece of brass tubing. I believe that one's an eighth of an inch in diameter and it fits right over a piece that's three thirty seconds in diameter. That allows me to connect one of the hands to the inner uh, piece of tubing and one to the outer piece of tubing. Now in order to connect those I use something called a Dubro collar. It's a little donut shaped piece of metal with a set screw in the side and I can glue that uh, collar to the hand and then use a set screw to lock it in position. By the way, all of this is uh, shown in great detail on my webpage at trainelectronics.com. Now the first time that I, uh, I built my prototype, I used what you would call one-to-one -one gears. Well, what does that mean? The two gears that drive the hour hand and the two gears that drive the minute hand had the same number of teeth. So that when this gear, which was attached to the stepper motor, turned one revolution, the hands would turn one revolution. Now the problem I ran into with that is these little stepper motors are geared and they're internally set up by that gear ratio to give uh, one full rotation after you have sent it 512 steps. So with a stepper motor, you send pulses and say, turn clockwise one step, turn counterclockwise one step. Well, it takes 512 of those steps to go around once. No big deal, except 512 is not divisible by 360, 60, or any of the other numbers that we associate with keeping time. That made the software more complex than I wanted it to be. For example, every hour when the minute hand got around to the 12, I had to move the minute hand ahead a few steps, a few steps on the stepper motor, just to make it go straight up. And it was a real pain to do the software. So it occurred to me one morning, I'm making my own gears. These gears were cut on a laser cutter. Why couldn't I have two gears, one with 512 teeth, put that on the stepper motor, another one with 360 teeth, put that onto the, uh, the shaft that turns the hands, and that way when 360 steps are taken on the stepper motor, it turns the smaller gear on the, uh, the brass shaft one revolution. Well, problem solved. So if we switch from one to one gears, which we had initially, to something that has 512 and 360, the ratio then allows the, uh, the software to command this to turn 360 times, which will turn the inner gear 
one complete revolution. Works rather well. Now you may notice that I do not have 512 teeth up here and 360 down here. This one is 64 teeth and this one is 45. And if you work out the math, uh, divide uh, 512 by 360, then divide uh, 64 by 45, you get the same, the same ratio, so it works well. And the larger teeth, first of all, makes it a little bit uh, easier to cut out on the laser cutter. It also makes them uh, quite a bit stronger. Now, the next issue that you get into is stepper motors don't know where they are located. They don't know where they have rotated to unless you tell them at the very beginning, uh, get an index of where they are. Well, how does that happen? Well, the two magnets that are on here, there's a magnet here and a magnet here, uh, can be detected by the Hall sensors. These little devices here are called, whoop, I just shorted a wire out and caused it to reset. That's what happens when you use a piece of brass for a pointer. Well, it's going to go back to 953. Okay. Uh, when those magnets go underneath the Hall sensor, the Arduino knows that it's at noon when they're both at that position. So from there, it can send the number of pulses to set the hour hand to 9, set the minute hand to, in this case, uh, what, 54 or something like that. And from that point on, it's in good shape. I also have it programmed so that every time the minute hand comes around to 12, when this uh, magnet on here comes to the sensor, it does a quick check of the time versus where the hand is, and if it needs to move a little bit forward or pause for a little bit to catch up, then that will also happen. Now, the, the last element in here, and let me show you on one of the samples I have here behind me. I'll disconnect this for a second. How does... How does the set of gears in the center mesh with the outer gears? Well, the, the way I can show you that, let me take the uh, magnetic sensors off of this one. Just kind of pull them out. And then I should be able to pull this gear off, set it aside, pull this gear off, set it aside. Here's the central mechanism that holds the hands. You'll notice the hour hand is connected to the smaller gear, and of course the uh, minute hand is connected to the outer gear. The shaft that holds the, uh, the minute hand goes the whole way through and comes out the bottom. So this is connected together. This little stub of brass is very important. It goes through and into a little piece of brass that's on the back of the, uh, the clock. And what that allows me to do, can you see that this moves? Well, what it allows me to do is to put this in. Let me put this gear back on and put this gear back on. And again, these gears go right onto the stepper motor. The, uh, the holes are oval shaped, so they hold rather well. Let me put this one here. Okay, and you'll notice that right now they're not really meshing too well, but I can grab that piece of wood in the back. It's only held by one screw right now. See how I can move the gears? And I can move them until they mesh with not too much friction. And at that point, I can tighten that screw down a little bit and I'll have a nice uh, low friction, uh, good mesh without too much uh, backlash or play in the gears. You'll notice there is some backlash. You can see that's really because of the stepper motor. The gears in there are not real high quality. When you're looking at something that costs a couple of dollars, you're not going to get that. So this clock is going to be off a little bit just because of the fact that the hands are only good within, say, a minute or so. Okay, once we have all that put back, we can put the, uh, the magnetic sensors back in, and that pretty much takes care of the clock end of the construction. The next thing I'd like to do is take a look at the, uh, the electronic hardware and the software that allows this thing to operate. So we'll pause here for a second and get that ready. Well, we've had a pretty good look at the front of the clock and what makes all of this operate. Uh, the hands, the gears, the magnets that are on the, uh, the inner gears, and the Hall effect sensors. What I'd like to do now is take a look at the back and see what it takes to make all of the front things operate. Speaker, of course, is for the chimes. Two stepper motors that terminate down here onto the stepper motor boards. The uh, two uh, Hall effect sensor leads. 
And back here we have a set of four boards. The two motor control boards I had already mentioned. In the middle is a board that I designed oh a couple of years ago for another project but the nice thing about it is it has a place for the Arduino Pro Mini, it has a place for the DF player and connections that I can use for a power supply. The 7805 goes in here to give me 5 volts. I can uh, cut a few traces and add plugs for the uh, uh, Hall effect sensors and over on the right hand side I can glue on a, uh, a um, <clears throat> Wemos D1 Mini that goes out onto the internet to get the time it also controls the uh, the MP3 card and on the left hand side I can glue on the two uh, motor control boards so you wind up with four boards glued together with hot melt glue I put some uh, dowels on the side kind of to reinforce them there are a few traces you have to cut on the front and back if you use this board some jumpers that you have to put in but it all works rather well and terminates nicely uh, on something that will fit onto the uh, the base of the back of the clock now let's talk about how you can duplicate this uh, this was designed in Corel Draw and I sent it directly from Corel Draw to my laser cutter I've put the Corel Draw file on my website I've also put a PDF of that uh, Corel Draw file there so that if you have access to a laser cutter you should be able to get um, those files to operate with what you have access to. In addition, you could do the gears with a 3D printer. The PDF file should get you the, uh, uh, the teeth and such. You just uh, edit those in, in SketchUp or whatever you happen to be using. I did do a couple of gears with the 3D printer, but they were so slow uh, to print that this is infinitely faster for me. And if you have access to a laser cutter, it's a better choice. And of course, this could be made out of just about anything. You could draw it uh, onto a piece of uh, plywood you could draw it onto a piece of plexiglass or cardboard or, or what have you. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I certainly have enjoyed putting it together over the last couple of months. Uh, it's been tedious at times because many of the, time, the uh, software modifications required me to make, wait an hour, in some cases several hours, in some cases overnight to make sure that the, uh, the modification uh, worked as expected. Uh, if you'd like to duplicate this, uh, trainelectronics.com has all of the uh, documentation. It has the software, has the Corel Draw files, both as a Corel Draw uh, uh, file and as a PDF that should import into uh, other software if that's what you happen to be using. I wish you luck. If you'd give it a try, uh, let me know if I can be of assistance. Drop me an email, davidbodner.com. Again, check trainelectronics.com for much more detailed information. I hope you've enjoyed this, and we'll see you again next time.